When you're a single parent on welfare, more kids means more cash. And these three mums make more money with every pregnancy. But they say it's still not enough to get by. With Damien's kids and my kids, we've got 12. I'm 33, so I could definitely do with three or four more children. It just feels like most of my life I was pregnant, like, really. I don't get paid from Centrelink for these children anymore because they're all moved out of home and grown up. But these children here, I get paid about 183 on average from Centrelink. It's the suburban baby boom. The more you have, the more you make. <laughs> I'm better off receiving Senate link payments and not working. But is it enough when you've got a family this huge? Welcome, Welcome to our family! Not according to these mums, who say having a big brood is anything but cheaper by the dozen. It's not fair that I can't live with my partner, because otherwise my single parent payment will be cut by Centrelink, so, yeah. Welcome, come in. Well, instead of roughly 500 a week, at least 800 a week would be good just to, to cover the food and some bills. It's not easy to raise a family on government benefits. Oh. I have um, Jessica, 18, James, he's 15, um, Haley's 12, Jada's 11, Dominic's 10, Star's 7, 8. Um, <laughs> Miko's five, Trey six, and Destin's two. This is Kelly. She had her first child at 15, and 18 years later, she's at number nine and counting. Most people would tell you I'm like a pit bull when it comes to my kids, so yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm very protective. They're like everything to me, they're my world. And they take up every corner of this home. You're really um, living on top of each other. Yeah, we are. You turn around, there's a, there's a new kid everywhere. How yeah, do you everywhere. do it? I just manage, just do what I have to do, I suppose. Look after the kids, try to make it work. Because your bedroom's just separated by a curtain here, so, yep. I mean, where's the privacy? <laughs> no, I don't really have privacy with all these kids and, yeah. Kelly's on family tax benefit A and B from Centrelink, which includes a $98 payment for most of the kids that live with her. That's $1,948 a fortnight. She says almost a third of that goes to feeding these hungry mouths. Then there's bills and fees, leaving her empty-handed and hoping for more. Just around $2,700, just the same as everybody else, just to survive and get through each fortnight. That would be good. Her partner Damien is also on benefits. I transferred Destin to Damien's custody, so Damien could get on a proper payment and because it's his son also. So yeah, I just find it e it's easier to survive that way with the payments, I guess. It's like it's not fair on the family, the kids of a night time, you know, they ask where Damien's gone. So, yeah, and as we say, you know, he's gone home because he's not allowed to stay here. He's got another three little ones of his own. That's a dozen between them. Have you always wanted to be a mum? Mm, not really, but it just happened, so... Do you think you could see yourself having more kids? Um, yes, maybe, yeah. How, how many could you go up to, do you reckon? I've always wanted to have ten, an even number, so, mm. yeah. <laughs> And they um, my bank account balance is 23 cents at the moment, which is pretty good this time of week because it's payday tomorrow, so... <laughs> this is the Francis family, all nine of them, led by single mum Karen. Ideally, obviously, I probably shouldn't have so many kids because I wasn't in a financial place to do that, but it happened and, like I said, I wouldn't change it, like... Have you ever had a job? No, um, never had a job. At this stage, no. I want to, but now they're all a bit older, I guess it'll be a bit easier. So I'm a bit embarrassed, to be honest, to try and get a job because I've got no real experience or anything with anything, so... At the moment. This 34-year-old relies on government payments. Three of the kids are in her care, five in her mum's. He gets extra financial help from the Department of Human Services. Um, roughly I get about a thousand a fortnight and mum gets about three thousand. Like, the kids are really expensive to raise. Money doesn't last very long. They, as soon as they know you get paid, they're all on you, so... <laughs> all the PS4s and Xbox Ones and then all the games, like the games are like a hundred dollars just per game. You don't want and see them unhappy and obviously as a mum you want to give them the best they can. The burden for welfare is already on the taxpayer. 
one of the things we forget is that we as a country love welfare. Over half of all households in this country receive some benefit from the government in terms of a pension. Social analyst David Chalk. Our welfare system is amongst the most generous in the world, or if you prefer, uh, it's one of the most caring in the, in the world. It's comparable to that of the Scandinavians, and the Scandinavians are world leaders in making sure that nobody is left behind. So do these payments give parents incentives to have more kids? Should poorer mums and dads have fewer children? They're questions that CEO of Children's Welfare Agencies, Andrew McCallum, is quick to dismiss. Developing policies around social engineering, I think that's a bit of a slippery slope. Um, we actually say because you're disadvantaged, we'll actually have more rules and regulations about how you'll live your life. I don't think in Australia, a first world country like Australia, that's something that we should strive for. But Professor Peter Jones believes the welfare cycle doesn't lift the disadvantaged out of poverty. This paediatrician says it's time we had a tough conversation. Too often we've seen people just wanting to make the policy decision that's nice to everybody and all of a sudden, down the track, we're dealing with the problems of not being strong enough to be able to make decisions that might need to be taken, that might be seen as unpopular. Some believe our welfare system is the most generous in the world. What do you say to that? I don't really know about much to do, like where other countries not get paid and that, but I guess in some aspects we are, yeah. I think they just need to look at maybe even each family individual or something. Like at first you're alright, but then as more kids come along it seems to you seem to struggle a bit more. So CEO of the Council of Single Mothers and Their Children, Jenny Davidson, says huge families make up a tiny percentage, but they need plenty of help because let's face it, kids aren't cheap. It's very important that we do have government benefits for families and we have a really good safety security net in Australia. But the reality is that families relying on government benefits are living in poverty. Mum of 11, Lisa, needs all the help she can get. The 41-year-old claims she can't stop falling pregnant. I was on all different contraceptives and nothing worked. Um, I tried getting my tubes tied. They told me I was too young to have my tubes tied after five children. You know, they told me I can go on a waiting list. And I said, a waiting list? I was already on a waiting list. Then look what happened. I fell pregnant. They're making ends meet just to make sure that their children have the best possible life. And really, in many ways, I think they're the unsung heroes in our community. Give us young Australians a fair go. We're raising the next generation of kids and we need money to do that. The Department of Social Services has sent us a statement which you can read in full on our homepage.